All right, let's review what you should have learned in physical science, all the stuff that you're expected to still be able to do in chemistry. I know I said I was going to make a video on this, but hey, I like to hear myself talk, and I know you do too. So, here we go. You got to be able to describe the basic atomic structure of elements and ions and isotopes using a periodic table. So, Let's get to it. Let's start with a typical kind of normal atom of an element. Nothing special. No isotope. No ion. Sodium. To find the number of protons for any element, you have to look up its atomic number. So we get out our trusty periodic table. We find sodium. That number in the top corner that is 11 is the atomic number. The atomic number tells us the number of protons. To find the neutrons, we'll do the mass minus the atomic number. So again, we go back to the periodic table. There's the mass of sodium, 22.99. We're going to round that to 23 and then subtract the atomic number from it. So 23 minus 11. There are 12 neutrons in a sodium atom. Now for electrons. This is a neutral atom. We know it's a neutral atom because there's no charge up here in the upper right-hand corner. And in a neutral atom, the number of protons and electrons have to be the same. On to energy levels. Here we go back to our trusty periodic table. And all we have to do is see what period sodium's in. Period number's over here on the left. This is period three. And finally, valence electrons. Valence electrons are based on group number. So we go back to the periodic table. We find out what group sodium's in. Sodium in group number one. Group number one has one valence electron. Group one has one. Group two has two. Almost all the elements in three through 12 have two. Group 13 has three. 14 has four. 15 has five. 16 has six. 17 has seven and 18 has 8. Well, that's your typical atom. Just a symbol, no numbers attached to it. When you start attaching numbers to it, then you've got either ions or isotopes. If you see these little positive and negative numbers, then you know what you're dealing with there is an ion. This says F negative 1. That is an ion. And what that means is the number of electrons have changed. To find the protons is still the atomic number. So we go to our periodic table, find fluorine. Atomic number is 9. To find the neutrons for an ion, it's still mass minus atomic number. So again, we go to the periodic table. There's the mass of fluorine. It's 19 minus 9. There are 10 neutrons in a fluorine ion. Again, when we have an ion, what changes is our electrons. To find the electrons in an ion, it's the atomic number minus the charge. The atomic number is 9. The charge is right there, negative 1. So it's 9 minus negative 1. That'll be 10. Now I'm going to let you in a little hint. Didn't mention this in class. For most ions, when you find the number of electrons, it's going to have to equal one of these noble gases. The noble gases are naturally stable. All these ions form to make atoms stable. So when we're done, the electrons have to be the same as a noble gas, either 2, 10, 18, 36, 54, I think that says 86. This one's 10, so it does equal one of our noble gases. It's the same as neons. That's a little hint, so you can check yourself when you do the electrons in an ion. As far as energy levels are concerned, Two ways to think about it. Negative ions, they don't lose energy levels. Or what you can do is you can look it up with the new number of electrons, which is 10. Look it up based on neon. Again, it wouldn't change. We have to go all the way over to the other side of the table. Fluorine is in period two. So it still has two energy levels. Again, negative ions don't lose energy levels when they form. So we can just look up fluorine and go with that. Or we can look at that new number of electrons and see where it is on the periodic table. That's neon's number of electrons. And base everything we say on that. As far as valence electrons are concerned, 
the whole reason these things form is to become stable, so most of the time you're going to end up with eight valence electrons in your ion. There are a few exceptions, though. Hydrogen, lithium, and beryllium are exceptions. And again, you can use that same little shortcut. It's 10 now in terms of the number of electrons. So it's going to have the same number of valence electrons as neon, which would be 8. We'll get more into that when we do our electron configurations and we get to ionic bonding. Next one, calcium with a plus 2 charge, calcium ion. Again, the protons are always going to be equal to the atomic number. The atomic number of calcium is 20. The neutrons will be equal to the mass minus the atomic number. The mass is 40 minus 20. So 20 neutrons there. This is an ion. Again, we see that plus 2 charge there. And for an ion, what we have to do is the atomic number minus the charge, minus positive 2 in this case, because that's what it's telling me right there. That's 18. And again, the self-check, it's got to be equal to one of these noble gases. It's equal to argons. It's equal to 18. As far as energy levels are concerned, the period number for calcium is 4. But in a positive ion, we're going to lose one energy level, so it's going to be 3. Again, the other way you can do that is by looking at that new number of electrons. It's got 18 electrons. It's like argon now, and argon is in period 3. Valence electrons, again, in almost all the ions, except for hydrogen, lithium, and beryllium, it's going to be 8. And again, you can just ask yourself, well, with this new number of electrons, with 18 electrons, how many valence electrons would it have? And the answer is 8. Last one here, this is an isotope. We got a 14 and a 6 there. You got those two numbers on the left hand side that tells you it's an isotope. This number on top is the mass. The number on the bottom is the atomic number. Protons are still equal to the atomic number. We can look it up on the periodic table or we can just get it from the isotope symbol, it's 6. The neutrons are still mass minus atomic number, but we're not looking at the periodic table. We're using that mass right there. 14 minus 6 is 8. Again, don't use the periodic table when you have an isotope. It gives you a mass. You have to use that mass when you find the number of neutrons. There is no charge over here, so it is a neutral atom. Oh, protons and electrons are the same in a neutral atom. We need the period number for the energy levels. There's carbon. Second row down, two energy levels. And for the valence electrons, it's based on group number. This is in group 14. We have to drop the 1. Group 14 has 4. Again, make sure we drop the 1s in the teens when we're up in 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Group 1 has 1. Group 2 has 2. Groups 3 through 12, the B groups, they have 2 for the most part. Group 13 has 3, 14 has 4, 15 has 5, 16 has 6, 17 has 7, and 18 has Next thing we got to do here is draw a Bohr model for calcium. We've got most of the information we need for calcium here, but we're going to use the average atom this time. The protons are still the atomic number, that is 20. For the neutrons, it's still 40 minus 20. And again, we're using the neutral atom this time, so instead of this one here, we're going to make the protons and the electrons equal. For the energy levels, because it's a neutral atom, we're going to use the actual period number, which is 4. And for the valence electrons, we're going to look at the group it's in. Calcium is in group 2, so it has two valence electrons. So again, we're not doing this calcium up here. We're not doing the plus 2. We're doing the neutral atom. And because it's a neutral atom, the protons and electrons will be the same, 20 piece. The energy level will be equal to the period number this time, and calcium is in period 4. Again, the period numbers are on the side over here. Calcium is in period 4. And the valence electrons will be based on the group number. There's calcium. Group 2. Two valence electrons. Start with the nucleus. Write in the protons and neutrons, 20 and 20. We're not drawing the little dots or circles to represent the protons and neutrons because you don't want to draw them, and I don't want to count them. Drawing our four rings for our four energy levels. One, two, three, four. Not being graded on artistic skill. 
just on content and making sure everything's correct. So four energy levels. And put those two valence electrons in first. And valence electrons are the ones in the outermost energy level. They go in first. So we know we have to have 20 total electrons. We've already got two of them done, so we have 18 left to go. Work your way down to level number one. Get that one filled first. The limit for level number one is two electrons. 16 more to go. Move on to level number two. Level number two can hold eight. Leaves us with eight more to go. The limit for level number three is 18. So all eight remaining electrons will fit easily into that level. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, do those valence electrons first because if you don't, you might be tempted to put all the remaining 10 in level number three. But by taking care of those two valence electrons first, we won't forget them and we'll make sure we get that third energy level written in correctly. Finally, the stuff that you had to know from the notes, what you have to learn, what you have to memorize. This isn't all of it. I mean, there's other things in there, like knowing that the nucleus of an atom has most of the atom's mass, that the electron has most of the atom's volume, that the, the electron cloud is mostly empty space, that stuff, energy levels, that the, the electron cloud is divided into energy levels, and all the electrons in an energy level have similar energy. The electrons in level one have the lowest energy. The electrons in level seven have the highest energy. Knowing the limits, level number one holds two, level number two holds eight, level number three holds 18, level number four holds 32, level number five holds 50. Knowing all those limits too, there's a lot more than just this. But this is uh, a good chunk of it. Relative size is large or small. Remember that your protons and your neutrons are your large particles. They have considerably more size and mass than what an electron does, about 1,800 times more mass than what an electron has. Charge, proton's positive, neutron has no charge, and electron is negative. And don't fall into that neutron negative trap. Neutron is neutral. Role, their jobs, protons are identity. They determine what atom an uh, what element an atom is. So if you have an atom with 35 protons in it, well, that's the atomic number, and that tells us it's bromine. All atoms with 35 protons are bromine. If you had 36, it wouldn't be bromine anymore. It'd be krypton. If you had 34, it wouldn't be bromine anymore. It would be selenium. Identity. Neutron is nuclear stability. Holds the nucleus together. Protons have a positive charge, and to jam them into a tiny space, you have to have something that overcomes the repulsion that they have. The neutrons are what does that. And for electrons, it's reactivity. What determines how a substance reacts is how its electrons are arranged in its electron cloud, specifically the valence electrons. And then finally, location. Both the proton and neutron are in the nucleus. Where's the electrons in the electron cloud? Don't be that kid that misses the question that asks, where are the electrons located? It's called an electron cloud for a reason. Don't overthink it. Again, there's more than that. Make sure you go through all the notes. That's the application side of it. But make sure you go through all the notes so you know everything you need to know about energy levels, everything you need to know about a nucleus, the subatomic particles are made out of quarks and stuff. So you can get 100 on this quiz and start the quarter out with a good grade.